Hey friends, it's Akadiris. So many of you probably know that I like disturbing and creepy content from the internet and nothing satisfies me more than sharing creepy content from the Japanese side of the internet because I feel like there is so much content that is available that is still so unknown to the Western side of the internet. So today's video is going to be another teaspoon of content for you guys because we're gonna go over cursed images from the Japanese side of the internet. Now, when I say cursed, I don't just mean ghost stories, creepy pastas, or paranoia. These are legitimate raw photos that have been posted by real users, and it's left Japanese users all over either confused, paranoid, terrified, or just a mix of all three. Stay tuned. I hope you clicked on this video before bedtime. Okay, so the first photo I'm gonna show you guys came from Twitter and the user actually posted a few photos of this and it's a children's drawing on the wall of a supermarket. Now, before I show you guys the actual photo, some supermarkets in Japan tend to just give out flyers to children for them to just draw on it. And then that child can give it back to the staff member and then they'll hang it up on the wall. I'm pretty sure other supermarkets and places do this as well. It's just like a nice little public thing. However, this particular customer noticed that one of the drawings that was posted on the wall was very concerning. And it wasn't just one customer, it was a lot of customers that saw this and made complaints about it. And this is the drawing by the child. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> so clearly, the focal point here is the red face. This reminds me of like that scene from Inception when the child was drawing like the red face demon that was on the wall. This is really synonymous with that. And so we see the eyes popping out, a very demented smile, but also not only that, if you notice in the background, there's a stick figure that has hung themselves by a noose and there's a chair that's also fallen. So again, this is drawn by a child supposedly and below it i'm gonna try and read this out sorry my japanese isn't perfect but let me just try this out so it says otosan itsumo oshigoto to ganbatte kurete arigato okasan hayaku modotte kite ne um so again my japanese isn't really great but i'm translating that to dad thank you for all of your hard work and mom come back soon or actually like come back fast a lot of people were wondering is this some just sick prank that somebody looked up at. Some of the customers complaining to the staff being like, why would you even hang something like this up? Who is the one that did this? And you know, it brought a lot of concerns of, is this kid getting abused at home? Are they drawing their father? Is that the face of how they see their dad? And is the mom who they want to come back, is that the stick figure in the back? There were a lot of theories about this photo. So it was really, really concerning. And so what happened was that a lot of customers started not only complaining to the staff, but they also wanted to call the police. And what ended up happening was that they did look through the security footage. They did see that a child did turn this in, but they didn't see where the child came from. And it turns out that there was also no parent that was accompanying them. So it wasn't made by some prankster, but unfortunately, I guess given from the footage that they found, there was nothing else to go about that. I don't know, maybe the staff kept it just in case something else comes up. I would keep it just in case. To the lower right hand corner, it says that they're five years old. I just noticed that. Also, they used the Twitter sensor I can see uh, to blur out the name at the bottom because I guess the child did write their name on there. But again, the child who actually drew this, I don't think that they've actually been found. Yeah, let me know what you guys think of this one. This one is just disturbing. Okay, so for our next photo, we have what seems to be a house that is placed in a very awkward position that shouldn't make any sense it's placed literally in the middle of the road and even crosses on to the gravel and the grass so just to give context here this is a house that has most likely been drifted away from the 2011 tsunami and earthquake that hit Fukushima. This is actually half of a house that has just washed up on shore. But now you can see that there is graffiti all over it, what seems to be. And for those of you that just know basic kanji, you will know that this is the Japanese symbol for person. Hito. That's like the equivalent of seeing a bunch of stick figures of people graffitied onto a house. And all of the locals were just shocked by this because this actually happened 
a couple of years after this house was actually washed up on shore. So originally the graffiti wasn't there. So nobody knows exactly who made this graffiti, what the meaning of writing the word person is. Not too far from it, there's also some cars that are graffitied with the same kanji. It's not impossible that maybe some sick pranksters just wanted to creep out people because, I mean, that does happen. But it's also not uncommon that you get a lot of really weird people out there. I actually traveled to a graffiti house that was actually done by a schizophrenic. And so after doing that, you know, it, that could easily be the same thing from here. What the meaning is by saying person over and over and over, I have no idea. I do have to say there are photos of inside of this house and I'm gonna show you. Now I have exclusive photos of inside this house and it was shockingly very clean and put together. Now there was a tent and what looked like a picnic inside and everything looked as if new. Just kidding, that's actually a photo of our apartment and we just held an indoor picnic recently because the weather was so bad. So we just chilled with friends eating snacks from Sakurako because I can say with confidence that if you want a taste of what genuine Japanese snacks are like, Sakurako gives some of the best snacks that are closest to what the locals are looking for. <laughs> Sakurako also supports local Japanese snack makers. Okay, I can't do the voice anymore. They also support Japanese snack makers and provides traditional Japanese snacks, teas, and even a special tableware, which in this case is an item called the Sakura glass. Hey, look at that. It's pretty nice. Now, with that said, the theme of this entire box, you guessed it, for this month is called A Night of Sakura. It includes treats such as, get this, Sakura Cream Cookies, Sakura Castella, Sakura Mochi, Sakura Cashew, Sakura, Sakura Cashew Nuts, and many more. All of the snacks pair really great with their blueberry hibiscus tea. That was the first time I've even tried that and it was awesome. And yes, I know, I said Sakura a lot. But look, Japan views Sakura like how America views pumpkin and spice. It's just like the golden child flavor of Japan. Now each box comes with a booklet where you guys can learn more about the snacks as well as allergen information and more regarding Japanese culture which I think is a really nice touch. So you guys can sign up today and receive your own Sakura Co box by clicking the link in the description below. Hello! Welcome back. No, but legitimately there are photos of the inside of this house that I will show you now. So as you guys can see, the wreckage is still there from the house being washed up on the shore. It doesn't seem like anyone's taken the time to actually clean up this house off of the road and it's just permanently there. I don't know if today they, they've cleaned up the house, but if anyone wants to take a trip to Fukushima, be my guest. Actually, who knows, maybe I will. Okay, so for our third image, it's so creepy. Ugh, God. Okay, um, group photo, mostly Japanese women. All of their eyes are censored, except the one in the middle, who has their head cocked to the side with an expression that is so uncanny valley, like I don't even want to look at it. This photo is actually really old uh, from the Japanese side of the internet, but it's still unsettling whenever I look at it. And I know a lot of you who are looking at this thinking, that motherfucker right there is not real. You'd be right. Cut to years later, somebody actually did debunk this photo and I will show you the original. Yeah, much less disturbing than what we saw. But for years, the photoshopped version was circulating all over Japanese internet and it just creeped everybody out so much that it even made it onto some news articles of, oh, who is the mysterious woman? When really it was just, especially at the time, early 2000s, a very well photoshopped image. Okay, so next image, this one's actually more funny than disturbing. Okay, maybe it is a bit creepy. Hi, I choose you. Nightmare fuel. Um, yeah, I don't know where this is from. I don't, I'd like to think this was not Japan. This isn't even like a little like statue in a building. I can see that this is a display outside. Also, I see an Entei leg in the back. Was this some kind of Pokemon event? I have no idea. Now you guys think this is creepy. Let's look at the rest because there's more. We also have Ash Ketchum and Misty. Bro, did she get shot in the chest? Also, why is she swole? Uh, <laughs> it's so gross. I don't like it. Okay, this is me about 15 minutes later. I just found out that this was actually an event in China. I still don't know what the festival was for. I mean, obviously it's Pokemon. What is this? I don't understand. Oh my God. 
Seriously, you thought the Willy Wonka experience was a disaster? Imagine going to a Pokemon event and then seeing this. Parents be telling the kids today, oh, the original Pikachu was much cuter, and then you take them to this? Those kids are not gonna believe you. Are you kidding me? I digress. Let's just go on to the next one. Okay, so this next image... What what about this image? No? What about this image? No? How about this? Mm. These are all scarecrows from farmers who legitimately put them there on purpose. I think that having these on your farm would scare a lot more than crows. I think you're not gonna get a single person entering your farm with these, bro. To be honest, these are actually probably more effective than your normal scarecrow, but dude, how and why? Dude, this looks scarier at night. There's something about like the spotlight on this one, this mannequin in particular. I'd rather see crop circles. Okay, so for our next image, this one came from Twitter. This is just more ominous than anything. There's nothing haunted about it. You know, Japan is such a vibe with aesthetics, right? And I mean that with the best intentions, but also the worst. Sometimes Japan can look just as terrifying as it does beautiful, and this is one of them. So this user happened to just be taking a stroll or maybe they're going home, but obviously they have to cross the train tracks and when they're waiting on the other side, this is a very rare sight to see, but there is a Tori gate on the other side of these train tracks. Now, a Tori gate is that red gate that you see in front of Japanese shrines. I have never seen one that happens literally in front of the train tracks. Usually they're like, kind of like maybe off to the side of a hill or a mountain off the road somewhere, not in front of the train tracks. And the way that the red light from the train light is hitting the Tori gate just makes this look so ominous. Like, it looks like you're about to enter into another world. Tell me in the comments if you guys would cross those train tracks. I don't know about you guys, but I wouldn't. So for our next photo, this is a kind of an old one, but a happy looking one nonetheless. You have a very cheery Japanese woman standing in the center, surrounded by content Japanese men around her in the same room. And the woman in the center that you're looking at, her name is Sada Abe. If that name doesn't ring a bell, maybe you've seen my video going in full depth of this woman, but the photo that you're looking at is of Sada Abe currently getting arrested by the policeman surrounding her for killing her lover through erotic asphyxiation and then chopping off and keeping her lover's genitals in her kimono for years to come. Yeah, I said that right. So this woman's case is actually very famous in Japanese true crime history. And you might be wondering what was Japan's reaction to this? Well, from a PR standpoint, actually quite well. There's been a lot of movies talking about her and I feel like the majority of people who have heard this almost view her whole story as like this weird, tragic romance story. She was a prostitute at one point, fell in love with one of her clients that was married and through their affair, she became very obsessed. He couldn't take her in as his lover at the end of it all. And through her broken heart, she just killed him while they were doing it, kept his genitals to herself. And through that, I guess it's just been weirdly romanticized in Japan, I don't get it. I personally think that it's really weird. <laughs> I think it's really bizarre. I mean, I already think it's weird when people like keep the hair of their lover through obsession, let alone, I don't know, man, their, their crotch. Yeah, I mean, my biggest question is why is she smiling in this? I mean, she's literally getting arrested. She seemed pretty proud of it too. And they did interview her like years and years later, but I have that all in my full documentary of her because she's a rabbit hole. She is definitely one of the most bizarre crimes that I have ever read in Japanese true crime history. Also, some of you might be wondering where did she keep the genitals? Again, she kept them in her kimono, um, occasionally maybe at her house, and she was putting them to good use in exactly the way that you're probably thinking. Yep, she did that. Mm -hmm. Right, okay, let's just go on to the last photo, shall we? Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna share with you guys here is a collection of photos. I'm not gonna call them cursed images. They're more like dark historical photos. And I thought it was important to still include this in this video because there's a lot of things in history that tend to get shoved under the rug. And the only way to prevent history from repeating itself is learning from our past. So I kind of wanted to just include that. But the first photo here that we have are two Japanese kids seemingly hanging out on an empty lot. The next photo, I think it's the same kids but hanging out with their mother on the same empty lot. The next photo is of a group of Japanese kids having their hand over their heart. 
And the last image is a group of Japanese kids looking out the window with one of the kids holding an American flag. If you haven't put it together, this is a collection of photos taken from an internment camp in America. If you guys don't know what those are, they were camps in America during World War II where the president basically ordered to hold over a hundred thousand, if not more, Japanese American people after the attack on Pearl Harbor. So this is one of those things. I know that there was a lot going on in World War II from multiple countries, but this is just one of those things. As an American, I did not personally learn this side of history and I blame my teachers for it. I know that schools are all different all around, but I definitely know I wasn't the only one who experienced this. This seemed like a part of history that my teachers just didn't want to shed light on for whatever reason. And I think history is genuinely taught and told by who's ever teaching it. Maybe this is a side that, I don't know, my teachers just wanted shoved under the rug. Maybe they had that mentality of, oh, if we don't tell this new generation of what happened in the past, they can start off with a new clean slate. But in my opinion, History is already written and once it's done, it's set in stone and one day the truth does come out, people do find out and I feel like the only way to prevent history from repeating itself is learning from the past. That's just my opinion, my, my little nugget in there. I've shared a lot of disturbing photos and videos on this channel and for me, some of them have just been paranoia, some of them have been genuine raw photos. If you ask me, I'm more of a fan of genuine raw photos because you are looking at a piece of actual history that happened. Whether it's moments before disaster, you're looking at something real. And I feel like knowing that makes it even just all more disturbing. And that is why once again, I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight. Maybe you won't either. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.